Hey Shane, how are you doing? Good evening, how are you? Good, good, good. So, Motrome Show, Zero. The Motrome Show that never was. Strange right, name. Right. I wonder if people it want is, to yeah. know. Right, the Motrome Show nil is basically because we're going to start a Motrome Show on Friday, isn't it, Shane? It is, yes. Um, and we've been talking about it for ages. We thought, why don't we get into podcasting, doing podcastings? Um, and then we thought, hey, let's just go live. We're stuck at home. We've got lots to do, um, lots of time. So we've got plenty, plenty of ideas to bounce out. So we thought today what we'll do is we'll have the show that was never a show because it's our little way of practicing, having a chat, getting used to all the software, Um Anybody comes on, ask questions. We'll ask some questions, uh, but we're just going to bounce for an hour odd, Shane. Yeah, yeah. A bit like Jason said, it's uh, it's an idea that's been going around. There's not really anything like it out there, and there's really not an insight to how the industry is. Um, so that's something that I think we can show in a nice way. Uh, we can also get some different people on from, you know, motor and accessory companies and everything Shane. like that. And, Matt, keep buying them lottery tickets. Keep buying them, mate, and then come to have it. Me, 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 or oh, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go to Jason, and then you can sell it to me. There we go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so starting on Friday, we've got Aaron Mercer from camperbuyer.com. Great guest, Shane. Great guest. Yep. He's a, he's a, yeah, it'll be a good laugh, I think. Um He's raring to go again after what's been happening for the last few weeks. It'll be a bit of a bearded show on Friday, I think. Yeah, it got a bit, lot of knowledge, Shane. I love a lot of knowledge. Looks like Matt's not won the lottery. No. Oh, is, nah, is, right. is Matt having his own private party in our chat? <laughs> he um, is, yeah. All it is, Matt. I think Matt's just like bored of just chatting to himself, I think. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, we're going to do a lot of these boat road shows. We're not going to have a specific time on uh, on just a Friday uh, because obviously uh, we've, we've got lots of things to do as well. We're going to throw them out. We might do two a week, might do three a week, might do one a week. Um, but what we want to do as well, we're going to get lots of guests on that are in the industry, Shane, aren't we? Yes. Like I said, you know, different different people. Like uh, there's, there's a few names I've got rattling about. Um, but now what we also want to do is... If you're a YouTuber, if you're a blogger, if you've got a caravan, if you've got a motor home, uh, what are you laughing at? I was la laughing at Matt's comment at the bottom. Um, if you've yeah. got a motor home, um, if you want to ask us a question, not just put them in the questions. We want to get you onto the show, basically. Um, and the way we want to get you onto the show is dead simple. Is if you pick up your phone... Go to my Twitter, Caravans and Campus at SY45RP. Follow me and I'll follow you back, basically. And then all you need to do is DM me, hi, and we'll take that. We'll do the rest. We'll get you onto the show. Um, also, if you want to follow me on Instagram and just DM me, hi, and we'll do that. Shane? Yeah, and if you if you haven't got either of them, just give us drop us an email to that address at the bottom, Shane at WeBindingMotorCaravan.com. We do want to get some questions in. To be fair, um, there's like I said, there's not much knowledge out there on the industry and how it works behind. You know, if you look at the car industry, there's so many vlogs and people doing YouTube videos and stuff. Want people to get into it with the with the motorhomes and you know just ask those questions really. So don't forget, if you want to come on the show um, and ask us some questions or just have a chat or even talk about your YouTube channel, we'll promote that. All mm. types of the community, we want you on. On to my Twitter, follow me, I'll follow you back. If you've not got Twitter, join, I'll be your first follower. Also, you can go on Instagram. And again, Shane, there's your email. Yep, my email address at the bottom, happy to go with, the, yeah, just drop us a message. It's, it, I'm using that email address pretty much solely for this so far away and we also are doing jason for the people who want to watch these shows is a podcast and we'll put something in the bottom after this show just to for a few more details on that so when you're on your motorhome trips you can download it and if you really love us that much you can have a listen then as well 
Jeff, have you won on the premiums? I've started premium bonds as well. I think I brought ten pound at ages or hundred pound ages ago. I can't remember. I never do the lottery, Jim. I used to, but I never won, so I got bored. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Sorry. Um, right. Um, what have you been up to? Uh, I've just been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, just, you know, the, the website stuff that you normally do. I've been putting those uh, show videos up that we did at the NEC. Uh, bought a push bike. So I've been starting to do a few rounds and then I've walks and little bits like that are the only things you really can do what about you hi first motor how are you doing mate i have been so busy doing jobs and everything um i've enjoyed it i'm like i'm on holiday and i don't know when i'm going back but i must admit now i don't know i'm it, it, we've we've got to do what we're told that we real let's be honest we have, um, yeah. I, I think every, just just cycling to work and stuff like that. The traffic this last week or two has just gone through the roof. It really has. So people are definitely getting back to work. We we'll just need to see what uh, Big B has. To... Ooh, sorry about do that. You to to have... Do you want to answer the I'm about to pass my license with an automatic. What camper or motor would you recommend? It's got to be automatic, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The problem you've got, Prim, with automatic motorhomes is a premium on them. There isn't many automatics about, is the shame. No, I mean, they're a lot more popular, or sorry, there's a lot more around in the newer models, but then your price bracket goes up and up and up. And I don't know if you remember at the show, I think automatic options was something like five, six, seven hundred quid on top of manual, which for, a, I think, is bloody cheap, to be fair, when you're buying a new motorhome. <sighs> I'll be honest with you, Shane, when we get an automatic and they don't hang around. No, they don't. I mean, they, they don't yeah. at all. Uh, Prim, personally, I'd pass your test manually if you're going to be looking at getting a, a motorhome. Uh, what do you think, Shane? Uh, if that, it depends if that's possible for Prim. Um, but there are ones around there. It just depends what your budget is. Right, have you got this one? It's Tony. Hi, guys. A quick question. Layout aside, do you think that European vans are better than British vans? Uh, Tough I... question, Ladders. In what way do you think they're better, Tony? Is it build? I, I don't. Well, go on, Shane. What do you think? I prefer. It's a difficult one because if I if I was to choose a premium motorhome, I know what you're going to say. No, I know I'll, I'll leave that for later. If I was to choose a premium motorhome, I, I, personally, I won't go British. I just don't think the layouts um, and everything are quite as good. Uh, you know, you, I, it's a difficult question, really. But I know also, generally the, they are better built in terms of damp. I think, and as you always say, the more accessible. Yeah, yeah. It's I always say go German. Yeah, but we do make some good fans, Shane. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all down to budget. I mean, if you're spending, I mean, the eldest is what are they, forty five, fifty grand for a new one now, something like that. You don't really get much European stuff for that. And I thought some of the auto quests and little bits and bobs at the show, the one nine fours and whatever, were. They've come on. They're coming on a long way, Dave. I think Chassons are a great van, and they hold the money well as well, Shane. Chassons are incredible at holding the money. Yeah. You can, I mean, we obviously look at what they are new, especially you know the stuff that's like 2019 plates, 2018 plates, and sort of work our way back. And we need to pitch it just below as a as a retail price. Um, you know, obviously below a new price, but they don't seem to go bloody down. I mean, you can what something that was forty-five grand two years ago is probably still forty grand as a retail now. I think the chassis just get better and better, like another certain motor home you're going to be talking about later. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I do hear about the old chassis is the electric bed, but I don't think it's a major problem. I, I think the electric bed's probably a user error sort of thing because obviously you don't want to bend them and. People will try and force them up or down, and I reckon that's more the problem than the bed mechanism itself. 
Shame the amount of switches I've swapped over, took the key off and put a switch on instead of the key and the, you know, the press the up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just put a manual, just a switch on to do it. Have you really? That's interesting. Yeah, guys. yeah. I never, I never... Yeah. Uh, because the keys are flimsy as well. well so, what do you need a key for a bed for? Well, they have the, they're locked on if a child. So, do you know what I mean? If you, yeah, if you, yeah. Yeah, if you've got a child in the bed or you've got a child about, you've got to put the key in to be able to lift it up and down. I, I guess that makes sense. Uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, again, I, I do think it is probably user error why they do break more. Yeah, than Tony's just, back, just just coming in now on build. Um, it's a tough one. I, I, I'll go German. I'll go German. I'm a deathless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Burstner. Cathargo, so on. I, you, you, we're, we're, it's a lot harder to find a damp one when it's mm. built in Germany than it is in Britain. Matt's going, aren't automatic gearboxes more expensive to get fixed? That's your area, Jason. Service them. Look after them. Yeah. Like anything else, just service a motor out when it should be serviced. When the cam belt needs to do, we get the cam belt done. Oil filter every year, just get it changed. The commercial vehicles they built to last, just look after them. Um, yeah, if they do break, they are expensive. <laughs> 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 All they really want an automatic share. I guess it's a case of making sure I save up more money. I think I will go Nissan England. Little bongo, prim. Yeah. The the, the the bongos and the L Grands. The, the, I think the, the L Grands are imported. I guess. I know the bongos are, are a lot. Uh, most of them are imported from Japan, um, mm. but they're all right-hand drive. They're all auto. <laughs> do you know? Do you know the old bongos like the two thousand ones, two thousand two? If you actually look at them, they're ahead of the time. You know, oh, with yeah, the yeah. automatic, the automatic blinds. Yeah. And 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 yeah, it's. And I think some of the roofs are as well. I might be yeah. wrong in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it? Um... Can you only keep a car in Japan for seven years and it has to come off the island? That's why they get imported over. That does ring a bell, actually, yeah. Yeah, I think you can only have a car once it's seven years old. They can't have them. Yeah, okay. Prim, Prim doesn't like bongos because they break down all the time anyway. <laughs> so Nissan El Grand it is. <laughs> what do we know? <laughs> Are like Volkswagen camper vans worth the money they go for? Oh, don't get me started. Don't, 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 don't. Well, that's that's one not to talk about later on anyway. Uh, are the <laughs> worth, are the, well, the worth as much as somebody wants to pay for them. And there's there's a lot on the market, but there's a reason for that because people keep making them and selling them and buying them. So I guess that's the only answer I can really take. I mean, we don't really know you can't too much price about the campers. The, no, the, the, the problem you get, people buy a van for 15 grand, they spend another 15 grand kitting it out, and then they think it's worth 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, there's some beautiful Volkswagens out there, Shane, but I, people I think get the, sentimental, mate. I, th I think the other thing with VWs as well is they're almost as separate to general motorhomes as cars are. They're their own little market. You've got motorhomes, you've got VW campers, and then you've got cars. They're, they're, they're just ever so slightly different. Yeah. Unless, unless you go down like a, um, an auto sleeper route or, you know, the, the main brand motorhomes that make the old camper vans, it's, it seems to be a very different area altogether. Bongo's is the best way to describe it. Do you, ever get asked, do you ever get asked this when somebody's looking at a fifty thousand pound motor? Are they good on diesel? Uh, yes. And my answer is, how many miles are you doing in it a year? And what's my the answer is? You are dropping fifty thousand quid. Why do you want to bother about diesel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You, you, you'd you'd find something. It's fifty grand. You're going to be doing a lot of miles on it. That's uh, right. You're not going to be doing many miles on it. I mean. The sake of saving a few quid over the four or five grand that people do on a motor home a year, it's not really for me. It's not a big decision maker. If you're going to get a motor home, you're getting a motor home to save an extra five miles to the gallon. I don't know anything. That's just what Google told me. 
you know what my favorite web there's a website and she's just said it right primo so there's a website that's taught me everything whenever i had a problem with a motor when i was first starting out and that website was g double o g l e yeah. google amazing google's been good for us i wanted oh yeah i mean motorhomes it's not they're not like a car where there's ten thousand of them made and they're in, in the country some of the motorhomes that are out there there might be only one or two of so that's the biggest part of my job is researching what a motorhome is and take some bloody doing i'm starting to get good at it it only took me 32 years you say we all you've got to make the mistakes so you have to make the mistakes um when was the last time you went to the motor home shane i went to a place called high peak in the peak district august bank holiday last year it was Boxed a lovely yeah a bit further up, up, up than that it's about from where i live it's about an hour and a half ago an uh, hour and a half away but uh this up in high peak what's the name of the place i can't remember the name of the place now but anyway they do um they do like a beer festival over the august bank holiday weekend the weather is absolutely spot on when is that, where you get, is that where you get past the reservoirs that's Whaley bridge isn't it yeah that's slightly it's not far off um but yeah we we go we go over mam tour big old deal go for a bit of a cycle and there's just a few of us that go up there and there was six of us up there this uh, this time and it was a bloody good time and the weather makes it though doesn't it what van did you go in went in the cathargo opus 5.6 it was an old thing but it was a big old thing and you know what my feelings are with cathargo but this was a this was an old shape 07 but no, it was no, sorry, mate. No, no, just bongo. If by motor home you expect it, but bongo vans are just juicy. I think yeah, Chris likes them. I think sorry, that's Chris... that's where I went. Hope, Hope Valley, Hope. Right. Do a beer festival there. Uh, bongos are juicy. Yes, they are juicy. Uh, what I think the two and a half litre petrols aren't they with an automatic? So big engine for the small van. Yeah, it is a big engine for a small van which is why they are juicy, but at the same time, you're probably going to be pushed for other options because there's Cheers, not too bro. much out there. Yeah. Um, so how long did you go for? Weekend or something? Uh, went on the Thursday night, came back Sunday night. Right. Hmm. Last time I went away, one was last year, and we went to Silverstone for the Grand Prix. And how was for, that? The Formula One. Mate, it was amazing. If you've never been to the Grand Prix before, just go. I'm a big Formula One. I love Formula One, but I've never had the opportunity to go to one. And I wanted to go just to see how quick these cars are. Um, so we all went, all the family went. And it was on the Friday, it was practice, and you got a free grandstand ticket. So we all sat up at the top and come around, and you're like, wow, how quick are these? And then um, Lily wanted to go to the toilet, so come on, I'll take you down. So we come down the bottom of the yeah. grandstand. I was on top of this grass, and it was right, they were right in front of me then. And she went to the toilet, and I stood there, and a Ferrari come past when I was on that level, and it blew me away. It blew yeah. me away. Do you know what? It's a great, great, great weekend. What made it for me was there's so much going on. And what did it for me? Craig David was on one night, and loads of people there having a lot were drunk well there's a group of lads this this is what sums it up there's a group of lads who come and stood behind us and you could tell they'd had a few and they went right lads you know the rules don't swear these kids here and i thought yeah. and that's how it was all weekend it was brilliant absolutely and would, brilliant. You, and would you go again yeah yeah the red arrows were fantastic amazing um, and I said to I said to Jake, I said, what was the most thing in June? He says, I never realised a car could go around the bend that quick. And it was amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite motorhome? Favourite motorhome? Well, as you very well know, it's a, it's a make and model called a Cathargo Liner for two I-53. But it is a hundred. Did we do a video grand. of that one? We did do a video on that one. And that's when you had your love it, wanted. 
I think that's when I was drooling, yeah, on camera. <laughs> nice fun, though, Shane. What yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I just, the lounge, it's just all about that lounge. I mean, it's, it's a relatively new layout, like we said. Um, it's almost like a wraparound U-shaped lounge, but then it does go into a pretty much a full circle square or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And then you've got that, then you've got that electric drop down bed, but it's only, it's, it's separated at the front. It's not like your normal electric drop down bed. And then you've got the shower in the skylight. Yeah, and then you've got that waterfall shower, which is, yeah, as you say, in the skylight. It's just incredible. I think when we did review that, the show shade, what got me was the accessibility. And I keep banging on about accessibility. And what I mean by that is if you can get things such as your pump and uh, water eater and all the other things that, that need fixing or getting at the back of the taps, the longevity of your motor home, because if it's easy to fix then things will get fixed. Um, yeah. What I noticed was you got it to everything, didn't you? Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. It was left a hatch up. It was there. Everything was there. Yeah. Kenneth, I have a Motrobe Swift Escape. Which model, Kenneth? Where can I get parts for plastic, for bed plastic strip? I said earlier, Kenneth, I, um, you'd have to send me a picture and I can find out what the greatest website is g double o g l e anything you want you'll get there um what's on about by plastic strip shane say again sorry jason what's the on about with the plastic strip i'm not sure it was sort of what do you know what model it is kenneth you can put yeah. give us a model then we can we can have a thing yeah give us a model uh, yeah yeah, give us a model and I'll think. It's only a matter, well, they, Kenneth wouldn't be able to do this. It's a matter of just going on to Swift's uh, dealer website, isn't it? Because uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's my first protocol. If, yeah. Uh, just get in touch with one of the Swift dealers because if anybody's going to be able to point you the right way, it's going to be them because obviously they, they will need bits like that uh, as a general rule. German vans. We've just been on about that, Chris. German, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, the last show, uh, um, was it the October one? Not the February one, the main big show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a little bit disappointed with Jaime. I wasn't disappointed. For what reason? Like, I was disappointed with them. For a, The reason I was disappointed in, in them for is because they just seem to be a bit boring compared to that, that, yeah, when you get into that cathargo and you think wow 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 and we've come on and i'm like yeah i mean the, the, i forget which one it was the, the 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 flagship model that they've got that looks absolutely stunning it looks like just a bullet silver lovely thing but then inside it just didn't really look like 120 130 grand motor i'm sure i'm sure it's made like one but like the cathargo um, and other makes death left and so on they just look the part whereas everyone's catching up aren't they yeah they've been so they've been so far ahead for so long that they just need to do something a bit different i think phil humphreys phil 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 now shane phil humphreys he follows me on twitter um he's been following me for a long time supporting me phil nice to see you Take Good evening, Phil. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Could we get a decent two to four berth motor home for 15k that I could get a few years at? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 sort of probably the budget that you need to be starting to look at really with the motor home. You do you, and you will get a good few years out of it. If it's your first motor home, expect an average year. Because if you enjoy your motor home. <laughs> The first motor home you buy won't be the right one. I mean, what you think it is until you start motor homing. You're going to get between the 2002, 2004. I'll be going autocruise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Best of car. Eldis. Yeah. Um, little Swift. Yeah. Swift might just be on the edge, but it depends with what you're looking at. You should be able to get something decent for that. I'd thought so. Well, you will be able to get something yeah, decent. Yeah, Just, definitely. Uh, as always, check for damp. 
at that sort of age just to make sure it's been looked after well. Yeah, the best, check, uh, best check, service rec- check service records, check the um, check on the Campbell's been done. What you can do basically before you buy a motor, <clears> you can go onto the government's website and type in MOT test history. And then what happens is if you type the reg in, all the tests come up. Now, if I'm looking at a 15-year-old van that's passed its MOT every time, I'm thinking, whoa, why? Expect to see a few fails. Uh, well, that gives you good history and it gives you a good feel for a motorhome as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that, yeah, no, that, that's, that's the main thing. I mean, that's one of the first things we do when we get a motorhome come through as an inquiry is have a look at the MOT history. First thing we do, because, you know, that will teach you a lot. I mean, it's amazing how many motorhomes you do come across. We've had one. We've probably had two or three in the last couple of months that we've been offered that haven't had an MOT since, like, 2015. Amazingly. I don't know. They've just parked it up, haven't used it, but that can be motorhomes generally. They might They just sometimes they don't get used, do they? No. No, that's the thing. People have all the best intentions and then work commitments come along, things happen and, um, and then they, they just end up sitting there, don't they? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Cheers, William. Anything you need to know, any help, any information, get in touch with either of us and we'll try and help you out the best we can. Yeah, just about to that, William, just to reiterate for the people who just joined us we are doing another show this is just sort of like a preemptive strike is the best way to put it just to make sure things work preemptive strike yeah. you like that don't you <laughs> I like that preemptive strike if it was yeah. me I'd just say but we're having a practice <laughs> yeah so so we're having it we're having a preemptive <laughs> strike <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I'm impressed with that preemptive strike yeah, ready for Friday night. We haven't even advertised. We haven't advertised this, and the comments coming in are absolutely brilliant. It's actually very nice to see. Seven o'clock Friday night. Do you know what, Shane? I'm absolutely buzzing. We said today we didn't expect anybody to watch. It was just going to be a chat for ourselves. Uh, basically, just have a bit of a practice for when we get to um, Aaron on on Friday. So at least we know what we're doing, ironing out any little things that happen, um, and basically. I've got 20 odd people watching. We've had some comments come in. It was like, I, I'm blown over already. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. I really yeah. Am. Okay. We're going to be doing shows. We want everybody on the show. We want a community. If you're a YouTuber, if you've got a motor, if you've got a caravan, if you want to ask us a question, it's great having these questions um, in the chat. Not a problem. But if you want to come on, simple, pick up the phone. Basically, follow me on Twitter. I'll follow you back and then just DM me hi. If you can't do Twitter, do the same on Instagram. And also, Shane? Yep, there's my email address at the bottom for those who haven't got Twitter or Instagram. Not everybody does have it, so just drop me an email. That is solely uh, an email address I'm going to use for this. So just fire away those questions. Or if you want to come on, whichever one. Ah. <sighs> Where are we up to now? Oh, no, 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 no. I think we're on... Uh... Uh, Richard. Richard. Hi, Roll what do you... Ca- Go on, sorry. Hi, what do you think of Roll Team, specifically the Pegasus 7 for... You know more than me, mate. You need to describe them. Uh, <laughs> we, the A-class, this is. Um, I think they're around 65, 70 grand, somewhere like around that as a new price. You can probably pick them up for mid-50s now. Uh, I quite like them. They're, again, they're quite, um, they're quite modern looking. Uh, they did do a door change, habitation door change, depending on where you're going to be using it from the continental side to the British side. So just have a look at that, depending on what your, your budget is and where you need that door. Uh, I think it did change the space inside of them a little bit as well uh, to so they could put the door on the other side. Again, have a look at that. From what I did get told once is the continental doors give you a bit more space on the inside. But again, I may be wrong. Shane, that's another brand, Roller Team. A bit like Chasson. The Roller yes. Team have actually getting better and better as well. Um, Tony, yeah, I mean, hi, Tony. Sorry. Sorry, yeah, I mean, for, for yeah, for Roller Team, I mean, we was for motorhomes that were probably 45 grand four years ago, probably not far off. 35 40 now 
Um, just going back to the uh, the roller team, another mate to consider at probably a similar budget is the Mobile Vetter K yachts, which me and Jason had a look at at the show. They're not too uh, far apart on price. Mobile Vetter, the K yachts. That was we did that on the last day, um, and we did the inside it first. It ah, yes, that was with the bedroom at the back, wasn't it? And the bathroom was at the front. It was at the front of the. Bed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I had the Ireland sink. Yeah, Very, yeah. Think, yeah. Same, same as the um, that that was the K yacht eighty that had the that, that the one that we looked at had an Ireland bed, mm. and the Ireland bed was actually adjustable height wise for the garage outside. Then it had the Ireland uh, bathroom sink, and then you had the lounge at the front with the drop down bed above there. Very similar. I don't think they're too far off, far away in price. Maybe five thousand pound difference. I might be wrong, but you'll find out. <laughs> That was an impressive van. You like that, didn't you? Roller teams yeah. are very similar, I think. Very, you know, yeah. colours and everything like that. To be honest, all the continental vans, the layouts are all pretty much the watchness, aren't they? Yeah. I had a pleasure of MMT tests on motor rooms for years. Mostly Marquis ain't putting them on my class four ramp. Hmm. Now, I'm intrigued to know why. I'd like to see why you think that. Is it because there's parts of the motorhome that you sit there and think, oh, they shouldn't be on a road, but they are because it's part of the motorhome and not of the chassis? Or for another reason? Okay. <laughs> Aid, I can't wait to be selling motorhomes. Yeah, I'd, I'm... Yeah. I'm I'm the same as Aid, to be fair. I just want to get away in one. I want to go up, back up to the Peak District, back up to Hope or somewhere like that and uh, enjoy some nice walks. Cheers, Brem. Chaps, Mrs. C likes the British layout. So would you rate Swift, Aldis, Bailey, Autotrail, or Slipper if you had to put them in a league? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> right. Number one, right, Auto Trail and Auto Sleeper are good builds. Agree? Yes. Yeah. Right. Bailey, I like. I think Auto Trail are overpriced. And? What do you mean, and? What else do you, what do you, what else do you think about Auto Trail and their uh, seat belts? Do you know what I don't like about Auto Trail? <laughs> we, do you know, no, no. How you can't put the fresh water straight into the tank. You have to have that pump, like a kind of a... The, uh, the whale. Is, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that the same on some of the Baileys, though? Yeah, it is as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a bugbear of mine. <clears throat> so, yeah, so... Go on, carry on. All right, let you... are we going on build quality... We got to, haven't we? Well, if I if I was to order them, go on. Who's your first? Put, well, Auto Sleeper and Auto Trail. Auto Sleeper tend to be more two burst, don't they? They tend to be quite heavy, which I think for the market that they're aiming at, which is the older generation, uh, you might struggle on your car license. Same with Auto Trail a bit. Auto Trail frustrate the hell out of me because they don't have build quality. Yeah. Auto trail straight the hell out of me because they don't always have the belts for the berths. Uh, build quality, I'd probably say Auto Sleeper are the best out of the bunch. Um, so you say Auto Sleeper is the Mad City and Auto Trail is the Liverpool. What, not winning a title this year? <laughs> hey, <laughs> don't, don't be careful. Be careful. <laughs> right. Um, and then, sorry, just yeah, just to finish off, Bailey, I really like. I think they do some great layouts. If you're buying a Bailey, just they have got the Alutex chassis, but the floors are still wood. So check the floors. Eldis, good budget van. round about 2015. If you've got a 15, 16, if you've got a fixed bed and it's got the hatch outside that goes under the bed, there's a plastic um, tray. Um, just check the water's not getting through. And, and what happens is it sits under the plastic tray most of the floor. Uh, they did actually stop doing it, I think, 16. Don't quote yeah. me on it, but they, 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 they completely changed it. Yeah. Um, so we'll go old trail, old sleeper, Bailey, Swift. Swift are the Fords, aren't they? Of the motor roads. Yeah, I'll, I'll always like Swifts because they do a nice full range of motorhomes. They're not 
a bit they're not like old sleeper which are generally two berths only they've they've got a bit they've got everything they've got a full range they've got everything from the escape down the bottom or the swift edge now all the way up to the contiki's yeah and then what we do not aldis last Eldis, yeah, I mean that they they are a budget van, budget van is the best way to put it. Mm. But you can have some of the special editions like the Marquis Majestics and so on, which same with the Swifts really, which put some really nice packs on. Can you show me more of your automotors on YouTube channel? Cheers. Yeah. Um, we change. I'm changing the format of how I do it. Actually, um, before I used to just do the motorhomes with a bit of music. Now I'm going to start to do like a review on them, um, and I want to do all the older ones as well because seem a lot of people seem to like them. It's just that what's happened at the moment, I haven't been able to do that uh, because what I've been doing is I've been in a, re a review and also how to set that motorhome up. And the reason I do that, how to set the motorhome up, is because mm -hmm. That vehicle I've already sold, and it was for the customer, and they get their own personal review um, set up. Sorry, so I'm going to do a motor home review, and then I'm going to do a separate one about to set the van up for the customer. So yeah, I am going to get into old ones. <clears throat> I waffled on a bit there, Shane, didn't I? You've done what, sorry? I waffled on a bit there, didn't I? So yeah, yeah, a bond, a bond, yeah, no problems. There's no time limit, as we said. Will motorhomes go up or down this year? Now, I think we need to. This is where probably where we talk a bit about coronavirus and what we think is going to happen. But this is a big topic we're going to be discussing Friday, Shane. Yes. This is a this is a big big one. Um, I think we want Mike. Great question. Great question. Do you want to leave it till Friday, or do you want to just browse over it now? Um. I'm going to just very do, do a very quick answer. I'm probably saying, will Motrones go up or down? They certainly won't go down. No. Well, there's good reason for it, which uh, seven o'clock Friday. <laughs> um, there might be a little bit of twitching before when we first when they ease up because you've probably got a few dealers with a lot of stock sitting there. Don't forget, we've got the 2020 stock probably sitting on the forecourt in March, haven't you? I've, um, well, some, of the new, think... some of the new stuff uh, like there was one dealer just before the lockdown happened god they were trying to shut the gates for the new motorhomes coming in at like five to ten a day however in the last week or two i spoke to a couple of big dealers who have turned around and said they may even increase the price on their motorhomes because there's going to be a bit of a demand for them because you, you're not going abroad anywhere this year and people that we spoke to in the last week uh, they're not really budging on the prices and there's stuff that we've yeah they're, they're just not budging on the prices the, dealers can't afford them to go down and which they won't no. simple as that if, if they're going to go down 10 grand then every single motor is going to get dealers going to go bust oh this is the plastic strip oh yes plastic, plastic strip. so so six berth uh bed on a lounge area no side when you pull out the wooden slaps of the bed to make it, you can Google that now, aren't you? Yes. Told I'll you, we'll best, best, web, <laughs> best website in the world. <laughs> I just need, I just need to, vi I just need to vision it. I can't vision the plastic strips. But yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll come back to that in a minute, Kenneth. I'll leave you to that then, Shane. Yeah, leave you to that one. You're multitasking. I'm multitasking. <laughs> William, me and the missus, two big dogs. What rig would you recommend for about 25k? I'd spend 20 grand on the motorhome and spend five grand on um uh, putting the dogs at the boarding. Oh, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm only joking, William. I'd, uh, I'd, 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 spend, I'd spend 20 grand on the motorhome and leave Vic at home for five grand. What have you got there? Take, 25. The, take the dog with me. Uh, 25 grand. What layout though? Uh, We've got to go to U-shape. I'd never uh, personally. I'd never go to look U-shape. Yeah. What about six berth U-shape with dinette? I'm thinking of the dogs because you could lift the table up for the dine on the dinette for the dogs. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, looking. That's right. I've only just. I've only just noticed the profile picture as well with the with the with the Rotti. 
So yeah, they're not going to be small yeah. dogs, are they? Mo, uh, Mo. You've got to have two uh, areas, haven't you? Diet, you shape. Yeah, you're going to want something a decent size with that. Mm. Yeah, uh, five, again, it's got to be five, six booth. I reckon if you if you sign in on uh, if you sign on will uh, on Friday, William, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of options on that. I'm going to have a good think on that one. I'm writing that down. Make sure you do, Shane. Oh, I will do. I love doing things like that. Because William might be the only person who'll be watching us. If he happens, he won't be watching us. We'll have nobody watching us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, that's written down. I'm going to have a look at that because that's a good question, actually. It's a lot of people, obviously, motor owners like dogs on a general rule. And uh, the size of those dogs, like this spaniel that Richard S has got, are big dogs. Tony Bills, yes. I can't even remember the first question he asked us. Uh, that was talking about the, uh, we sort of touched on that really, the build well, quality of the eldest daughter trail, the British, yeah. Build quality, we're all going to have good, good and bad ones is the best way to put it. Just do your checks properly and don't rush it. A two inch of tire hanging off ramp and ramp struggle, but AO, some rules have changed for the better. I think when I retired five years ago. You enjoyed your time, <laughs> Chris? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I drive. Oh, here we go, Vincent. I drive a 2017 Chucky. I've got a Ducat. How would you compare them to the Mercedes? Cheers, Vincent from Ireland. Cathog. Off you go. Go on, Shane. Off you go. Right. Um. I mean, the the, the question's more on. Okay, let me just read that again. So I drive a 2017 Cathago Chic C Line 2.3 uh, 177 automatic on the Fiat Ducato. How would you compare them to the Mercedes? Is that comparing them to the Mercedes Auto? Now, one of the big things, uh, to be fair, the difference between the Fiat and the Mercedes, as a general rule, I can't justify the price because you, you're not really spending that much time driving it. The only thing you want a Mercedes over a Fiat for is because you've got that real wheel drive for the garage. As an automatic, the Fiat have just brought out a new automatic gearbox, which is a lot better. That's a great answer. That's Cathar, but in terms of Cathar, I love Cathar. Okay. But we'll, get, we'll move on from that before I start drooling again. Um, <laughs> just, just a quickie, Shane. Lee Bateson. Um, I'll be Caravan Services. It's not a setup. I can't believe he's on. Hope you're staying safely. Um, leaf, uh, does a bit of work for us when, we, when we're really busy and everything. Um, he basically, when he first started out, he was doing quite a bit of work and then uh, he left his job. Uh, good guy, he actually cares about what he does. Lee does, um, good caravan repair service. Uh, really appreciate that watching Lee, really appreciate that, mate. Hope you're well. I mean, it's okay, this mate. If the, if, I mean, if Lee's probably going to be your best bet in telling you what the best build quality is because it's all right me buying them or Jason selling them, but somebody who works on them day in, day out, that's a different level altogether, and that's how he's listed them, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Actually, Lee, actually, get in touch. Mate. I'll actually give you a tinkle, actually. I think we'd like to get Lee on. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd yeah. like, I'd, I'd like I'd, yeah, and we uh, we can touch on, because he, 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 so probably some sense of his work, is caravans that he does um but yeah i'd like it yeah we, we can have some good chat and we, we can get people who have got some problems as well uh that will struggle to answer and lee yeah yeah we'll see what we can do with lee yep i think you prices are honest jason look after them well you've said this this is your friend isn't it it's got to be <laughs> <laughs> How much friends. you paid him? <laughs> if you watched, I'll tell you what happened. If you watched the last video I put out, it was a deathless motorhome shame, wasn't it? Yes. On the, at the NEC. And we started filming it, and a sales rep must have thought I wanted to buy a deathless. And he just. What happened, mate? He just wouldn't leave us alone. <laughs> well, you, you carried on talking, and I went to sleep on the bed. 
<laughs> best way to, to put it. But yeah, Jason's prices. I'm, I'm not just saying this. Bone of mine. Yeah, Jason's prices are pretty good, and he does look after them well. Um, but I, it's one of those things. I have a look when when I'm trying to buy a motorhome. I'll look across the board and see what they're worth. Google Auto Trader or everything like that are the best places to look, and Jason does come very well priced indeed. This job that we do isn't hard. It's how we sell the vans, and it's how we send the vans out. We send the vans out the best we possibly can. If there's a problem with any of our vans, it's not a case of bring it in next week or ever, bring it in tomorrow. Um, with Motorhome, it's not like selling cars. <clears throat> uh, Motorhomes are really clicky. Everybody waves to one another. Everybody goes to campsites, and at campsites, you talk. It's all about reputations. Um, quick pitch to myself. Anybody who has a Motorhome offers, they can bring it back every year. We do a free gas test, um, and we just look after the customers, basically. And that's what it should always be about. Yeah, because, and we mean this in the nicest way possible, we don't ever want to see you again unless you're <laughs> coming to buy another one. So you get it right going out, and hopefully you won't see the customer again because they'll be out of enjoying it with no problems. This, this is shame why I try and do a bash range from like 5,000 right the way up to probably 50,000 maximum because uh, there's no better than somebody starting off with a 10,000, 5,000 van. They come back a year later, move to 15, move to 20, uh, and, move, and basically move up. Um, interesting that you wouldn't consider a U shaped lounge. That's you. That's yes. you. Ha <laughs> 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 oh, <dear me. laughs> uh, Well, this is this is my personal preference if, uh, if if I was to have one, simply because I couldn't be bothered to make I couldn't be bothered to make the bed up every night. Simple as that. Uh, agree. But a U-shaped lounge, I find U-shaped lounges are what people have who've had a caravan and they move into a motor home. It's one yeah. of the most popular layouts for people yeah. who are moving over, over to over to um, over to motor homes. So <laughs> that dog's looking at me funny now, shit. Yeah, not surprised. Engine. I don't know where I'm going with this. Oh, that was the um, the Cathargo question. Engine himself, you'll probably answer this bit better. Fiat or Mercedes? Mercedes. Mercedes. For what reason? Just out of interest? Um, they just build. They just go forever, don't they? Well, it's like anything else, and it? it's how you look after them. Uh, I've had Mercedes cars, and uh, I don't ever seem to have a problem. I dare to say this now, unless next time I jump in my car. Uh, but Mercedes, I've never had a problem. BMW, never had a problem. But I service them regularly. I'll look after them. Um, what's, spot there. What's, Go on, ask me questions. I'm going to ask you another question. Yeah. <laughs> so so what, which one don't you like? See, yeah, which one don't you like? Renault. Why? Because I always seem to have problems with Renault. Renault, whenever we get problems. The cam belts, according to the mechanic, are a pain. A nice words to do as well. But I've always seemed to have problems where they cost me the most money to get right before is Renault. I've always Renault. Wrote, I mean, I've, we've got, a, for saying that we're out on the road buying, the, the two that I've broke... <laughs> wrote down in our Renaults. It's probably a coincidence. It's probably the owners that haven't looked after them, but I broke down in them quite spectacularly. I think the last one cost me five grand to sort the engine out. All right. What, um, I just what quickly, chassis, though? Favourite chassis? Um, Ford. I like Ford. New Ford. I really like new Ford. I, I like new Ford, Ford generally. Chassis. All all the way through the years, because they've always been quite well spec. They've always had cab air conditioning as a general rule. They've always had cruise control. The two little bits that you really want in a motorhome, really. Whereas some of the older Fiat's and stuff didn't have that. Do you know with the new, the new Ford? I'm not saying new new Fords. Probably uh, about two, 2012 onwards. They feel good when you drive them, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're, they're a lot more car like. Mm. 
Yeah. And, in, yeah. and interestingly, uh, Chasson, especially, I think, from 2019 model ranges, Fords are now their flagship base, not Fiat, Ford. They've got all, all on the 170 brake horsepower, autos, same as Benamar. They've done the same thing. Uh, even Auto Trail, your little Auto Trail F62. Do you remember that little two berth that you saw at the show? Yeah, yeah. What a nice fan that was. <laughs> two berth. It felt nice, Shane. It wasn't. That was a lovely little van. Yeah, fact, that, yeah, that was on the Ford. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting bogged down here. I'm going to have to... Hi, guys. I have a small court. I was wondering what your opinions were on lightweight caravans. I was thinking that the Swift Base Camp... That Swift Base Bank base camp you know, little, yeah. yeah 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 yeah. what a great little caravan there's the only thing though if you're going to buy one of them base camps you've got to have that back on yeah yeah for space yeah. um i mean ba that, the other thing with base camps is if you can actually get a hold of one uh, i know i don't know what it's been like for the last year or so but i know towards the start of them coming out God, they were popular little, little things that you just couldn't get hold of the stock. I'm, dealers I'm, are actually begging other dealers for, for for more base camps. When um, we were at the show, I went back to that base camp probably about three or four times. It just impressed me. Nice. Just, I don't know. I don't know. Just, but I, you've got to have that awning on the back. Yeah, you've got to. But it's, it's a space saver, isn't it, is the best way to put it. It's, it's yeah. a trailer tent, but better. Yeah. yeah. It's the best of both worlds. Anthony... Base cab, yeah. What you guys think? To, uh, I've not had many Frankies in, mate. So that's your that's your end. Well, we, there's not that many around. That's probably no. one of the reasons why. Uh, but yeah, a good solid make. Um, are you looking at new or old? That's probably the best question to ask because they're coming into a different. They're almost up in the game a little bit in the recent years to compete a bit more with the Cathargos and, and other bits like that. They, they're getting a more high-end van than they were. They, they were a bit of an high-end van, but they're a bit quirky and they weren't quite as popular for whatever reason. Where are you based? I'm based in Shropshire. Uh, website caravansandcampuslimited.co.uk. Shane? Uh, yeah, I'm based just outside a place called Burton Pond Trent. We buy a motorcar dot com. We we generally buy more than we sell, but uh, if we do sell one, there's it's because it's a very 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 good one. Not to say that the other ones aren't. Just um, we've got a nice network of dealers that we deal with, which is where we make our friends. <sighs> as soon as our sales, we will meet. I'd love to, Chris. Not him. Not hey. him. Oh, not him. <laughs> HSE sells as soon as the HSE. I'm assuming that's sort of Land Rover or Range Rover, so that'll be a nice choice. HSC is that not house? Oh, I don't know. It could be, I don't know. It's either a Land Rover, a Range Rover, a HSE, or it's a uh, house. I don't know. Hmm. I'm, 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 I'm old fashioned now. I don't know what these short words are anymore. I was laughing at that video when I watched because you could tell when you face it, you to go. You had a proper strop on you, didn't you? Oh, I just lay down in the back. Like, it's nice that somebody comes and talks to you and tells you a bit about it because what he did tell us it was, it was, it was good. But then when he came back the third, third and fourth time, I just left him to you. It was a deathless, wasn't it? It was a, it was a, was it sun, uh, not a sunlight? What was it? Deathless. Oh, yeah, I I don't, what was good with that with it is they have all the upgrades on them when they sell them. Yeah, you, you're not selling. you're not buying a motor based vehicle and then putting an extra ten grand worth of extras that you will end up needing. Yeah, uh, it, was, the, it was sixty grand wanted. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but all the extras were on included in the price, which I liked. That was the one, if you remember, it got the two side seat belts. Yes. Yeah, and there's right, many yeah. that do. There's many that do with the side benches that do the seatbelts on the side. That's right. Yeah, I can't think of any others really. No. Yes, um, I think that, got, that was that, that one. I think that was a 
uh, was that a loud and a special, something like that, that were importing them? Or they are importing them? It was the Euro style. Death Left's Euro style. That was the one. Right. That was the one. Hi, guys. Started watching about two weeks ago, but don't know where you're based. Um, if you look in the description box, Richard, underneath the videos, it gives you our websites uh, of, of who we are. I'm Caravans and Campers Limited .co UK. Uh, also, we buy campers where we sold them. Got a website for buying them. Shane. Oh, Shane. <laughs> um yeah uh, we buy any motorcaram.com is the best way we that, he's generally the buying website but that's where we do sell the odd few as well but I just, there's something i just want to add on to that we, we're doing this show we're not doing it to promoters we are this one just because it's a bit of an introduction and a bit of a practice for friday at seven o'clock um but we just want to have a chat about motor homes it's something that we both bounce off each other because it's not a job it's, it's, it's something that we love doing. It's the same as the reason why we set these YouTube channels up. It's, that's why I do a lot of hints and tips on there. Uh, I do the handovers. So when it, when one of my customers takes a motor home, they've got a hand, they've got a video there. So if they get stuck, and that's where we're also going to incorporate as well with the videos when we come out of lockdown, because obviously there's going to be not social distancing, it's going to be called retail distancing. So, so my... My customers there, when they have the motor home, it'll be all set up for them. They'll have their own video, uh, and that's how we use YouTube. And then I started to doing showing people simple things of how to fix things because a lot of stuff is is simple. I can do it, so everyone else can do it. Uh, it's all about giving, and then perhaps somebody in the future might come along and buy a motor home. So we're not promoting selling anybody. Cheers for asking. I went off on one then, didn't I? No, no, it's uh, but no. I mean, I've got to admit, Jason's videos. I mean, I don't personally do any work to any, but when I do, the first thing I do is have a look on YouTube, and a lot of the time, Jason's videos come up, and I have to look at him even more than I probably want to at times. But they are very good <laughs> videos, and and just going back to the 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 um, the dispatch videos, is that the best way to put them? How to work your motor home and stuff like that. That's probably yeah, going yeah. to be the way that a lot of companies are going to be going this year because obviously you can't do the close quarters because of social distancing. So it's something I think a lot of people will have to get into is doing a, vi a video of how everything works, posting it up on YouTube or sending it on or whatever. And then you've got that, that tutorial for life then. Yeah, the, the motor home industry is very slow to change anything. That's where I think... I mentioned in one of my videos, Shane, and I spoke to you a lot about it. I read a report last year where it said Google did a report and they said by the end of 20, going into 2021, 85% of content that we look at on the internet will be video format. That's when I thought I need to start doing things. But I am starting to see some motor home dealers now starting to do what we were doing six months ago. Yeah. Uh, Basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you have, I, I don't watch some of our older videos because they're just terrible. Uh, but you get into it, and you know, if I was a dealer starting up, that was the, or even a dealer now, I'd really get onto YouTube and start doing the videos because it's the biggest, it's the second biggest search engine after Google. Yeah. And I think a lot of the deals at the moment are still, are still advertising in the trade, the motor home magazines, the practical magazines, and them type of places. Uh, it costs a lot of money. That, and in a month's time, that magazine's gone. We publish content on the, all different platforms. What do we do? We do LinkedIn, we do Twitter, we do YouTube, we do Instagram, we do Pinterest, uh, Facebook. Uh, and once we put something up there, it stays there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's content that's always there and if somebody's if somebody wants a motorhome then you know all the all the information's out there is the best but, way to put it but i would say if you're thinking of doing a youtube channel just post just post mine were terrible just post and you just learn you get to learn something new just post just post them up and i find youtube's a really good community as well really nice people yeah. Love your videos, always very informative. I haven't got a motor on myself, but we'll still watch your vids. Keep it up. Thanks, Tony. Much appreciated. 
How more expensive are the Mercedes engine? Five to ten k. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's a, it's a new price used. It's a bit of a bit, sometimes a bit of a difficult question because they don't always do the same models on various chassis. So they'll they'll do one model, but they'll only do it on the Fiat. So there's not really much to compare. You get some of the older auto trails that are on the Mercedes. They might be two or three grand more. Do you reckon if they're on a Mercedes instead of a Fiat? Yeah. And I generally think. a better, generally a better seller as well. It's because of the Mercedes badge, isn't it? Yeah. No. Yeah, and more chance of being auto at that sort of age as well. Hi guys, we have an auto trail in Delaware and we want to remove LED rear lights. Any advice how to take them off? <sighs> it's odd because you can't see, can you, Shane? Do you want to make a note of that? Oh, that's one for you to answer, yeah. I'll just drop my paper. One minute. <clears throat> so, Why do you want to take them off? I bet... See, that's a difficult one as well for me, um, Delaware and everywhere. Uh, when it comes to things like that, we have our own mechanic who does them type of things, things engine-wise as well. Uh, mostly I deal with the inside workings of the water, the heating and things like that, to be honest. But if you make it out, Shane, it's something we can have a look at. Yeah, write that down. When you buy your motor room to sell, what do you look for and check before you part with your money? Great, great question. It is actually, isn't it? Uh, what can you tell you? Because you'll do it yourself. <laughs> 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 it's experience, um, Avon. Experience. Go on, Shane. You buy more than me. Uh, what do we look for? We look well. MOT check for this, isn't it? We'll start the process. If if I'll have a look what they're online for where they are online, how many there are online, what sort of price they're up for, uh, and what do we look and check for. Just daft things like if it's been maintained, service history, as, as Jason said earlier on, MOT history. The biggest one for me, above and beyond anything, is damp. That, you, it's called a pro to me to survey master. And for everybody who's listening, it might cost 300 quid, but it will be the biggest saver of money you'll ever get because if you get a motor home that starts getting damp it's going to cost you more than that 300 quid by some way a lot of the older bands though will have had issues with damp though shane when all yeah. said and done it's a metal box bouncing along a concrete road yeah and it is built by humans and there is a uh, user error you know, if that if they've not, it only takes a bit. It, it's not even how it's put together. Sometimes, if a bit of seal sealing fails, that's nothing to do with the owner. It's just you need to keep an eye on it and seal it when you can. Yeah, because it's like you're, you're take your house now. There's something on your house that wants doing, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, you only you only have to listen right, to what houses are like when the new build. Yeah, it's on the same as, as a motor. Right? Yeah, uh, there's no perfect motor home out there, folks. No, there isn't. <clears throat> um, but, but yeah, long and short, damp check, service history, MOT uh, history. Um, and when I go to buy a motor, you just need to make sure you know what you're buying. I think you'll like me, Shane. If a customer, if I'm going to look at a 10 year old van, I'm going to appreciate there's going to be dinks in it. Yeah, there's definitely. It's going to be, yeah. there's going to be, there's going to be wear and tear. I, I take that into account. If people are straight with me and tell me exactly what it is and I offer them that price, I don't want to haggle. I just want to go, thank you very much for being honest. There's your money. I'm off. Shane? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if it, we're gonna go, you're going to expect dinks, dents, damage, and even a little bit of damp, but it's when it's excessive, then that's when it becomes, you know, they are lived in. They are big things that people aren't used to driving. So you've got to expect uh, some, uh, you know, wear and tear or wear and tear. A lot more than a car, you know, I might, I might as well say. Because if you go to a car dealer and buy a car, you're gonna, most people are going to expect the bodywork to be absolutely spot on because they're easy to work on. Motorhomes aren't easy to work on. You can't just pull a dent out on fiberglass. Hmm. Yeah. It's a bit more doing. 
do you know what? what's my biggest crap that gets me in a bad mood where the electric step doesn't work yeah winds me up electric steps yeah all right what's your opinion of a rear wheel drive motor home as in some new cathargos personally i think it's probably the better way because the chances are you're going to have a garage on a Cathargo and you'll have that heavy load in the back and that's where you want the drive. Can't say much more. Nope. House got to get shot of bricks and sticks. HSE. Told you it was house. Told you, it was ah. house. Don't that. You're not down with it. <laughs> I'm not, though. No. All before my time. Oh, thanks for the advice. The other option is to sell up and go total van life, total stealth off grave. If you were to retire into a van, what one would it be? The longer you're going to spend in a motorhome, the bigger I'd go for. A class. Yeah, A class, fixed bed. Because if you're going to live in one, you don't want a bed that you're going to have to make up every single night. Yeah. I and mean, I don't like doing. I don't like like making up the bed at home every few days, let alone every single night. So yeah, big. Big payload. Um, if you've not got your over three and a half ton license, make sure you get it because you'll need it for that for the van size. Do any dealers let you try before you buy? Not that I'm aware of, apart from renting one, hiring one first. But not not many. It, there's not really a crossover between renting and or hiring and selling, is there? Richard, that's a little bit like having your cake and eating it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think th the, be the best the best answer is is not really. Hire. You, you just need to hire. Hire. It's a double it's a double thing question that is though. To try before you buy, are you trying to buy because you want to see if you like motorhoming, or are you buying it to see if you like the motorhome? Now, if you like the motor home, when you've been to view it, then you buy it anyway. If you know what I mean, Shane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The best question is to hire one first. It really is. That hmm. Just try, <laughs> probably hire one in the winter because we're a bit yeah. cheaper to hire then. Cheers, Richard. Am I right in saying you have a car from Park also? Just thinking, could have a weekend there that will give us time to look around. Um, I am actually based on a caravan holiday park, Chris. I, I, I don't have anything to do with them. I just rent the pitch off them. Um, I've been there donkey's years. So what you can do, yes, you can come to the caravan park and stop here, stop on the caravan park. Um, anybody who's coming to look at my vans or is coming to pick a van up, wants <clears> to stop <throat> the night, I do get them discount for it as well. Um, but, yeah, I am based on a holiday park, but I have nothing to do with the holiday park. You know. it's a bit of a it's a bit of a funny one because when me and jason started talking i found out where his business was and it's actually my family's business about an hour and a half away from me oh. it's where my dad used to go when he was young on the farm because basically where where jason was it used to be a farm and then the army uh, sorry during the war the farm got taken off them they got all the bases and everything put down so it was absolutely ideal for a caravan park when it opened back up again well, that's my uh, extended family where Jason is based. Small world. Small world. Lower Lakeham. Delaware, Delaware, where everywhere we want. <coughs> we want to take the lights off to get the wine to connect a positive feed. Oh, this is the Delaware, isn't it? Feed yep. to the camera from the side lights so I can see <clears> behind <throat> the van when driving. Do you want the camera on? Could have a wireless camera. That's not my area. <laughs> I'm going to be perfectly blunt. I'll be honest with you there. When it comes to cameras or tow bars, I use a fantastic <clears> company <throat> called Salop Towing, just based in Shrewsbury. Uh, for what it costs me to actually buy the tow bars and to buy the reversing cameras, uh, it makes sense for me to just to, to just use that. I'm, I'm sorry, Dallary. I can't help you out there, matey. I mean, the other thing is, Jason keeps saying, there's a lot of motor home forums if you just type in the if you type in that sort of question and just maybe in typing motor home forum afterwards somebody might have the answer on reversing cameras 
They'll get 50 different answers. Yeah. One of them might be right. They'll be clever than us. Local dealer to what is Lutz? A place uh, local dealer to his, his list. You hire a van off his high fleet, and if you buy a van, he knocks off the high cost. Good idea. Uh, yeah, but he is an high company, though, Shane. Is he? Okay. No, look, look, look. If you hire a van off his higher fleet, ah, and if you buy a van, he knocks off the cost. Which that might that might actually be a common thing in higher. Yeah. Circles. They they do tend to be they do they do tend to be different companies from general motorhome sellers. Yeah, yeah. Well, they just branched out. Yeah. So, uh, but if I was hiring vehicles out and somebody came along and brought <coughs> a motor off me, I'd probably do the same type of thing. Yeah. So, uh, um, but yeah. Small six meter van, easy to drive and get around. Hi, Tony. Very large van for fixed bag, pros and cons. Um, it depends where you're driving around, Tony. If you're going to be using the van as a dual purpose, that means I go in camping in and go to work in or push around in, yeah, a small van. Very large vans with fixed beds are solely for going motorhome. Yeah, and the other thing just to add to that really is some motorhome caravan sites uh, – do have a, a length limit or do have limited spaces for the longer ones but you can uh, we bought we bought a motorhome called a chasson welcome uh, 530 the other day both that and a person that we bought and jesus christ the space that's inside them you you know you can struggle a bit with the payload and whatever on the six meter van it depends how much you're going to be like jason says it depends where you're going and depends how much time you're going to spend in it because if you're going onto sites and then you're going out walking all day, then as long as you've got a nice big lounge. Did you not buy a load of Shassons just lately? Yes. What happened there? Which it was a network, wasn't it? High network. Yes, it, it was, yeah. It was a high network that went under and the customers owned basically there's a lot of there's about 400 customers who bought a Shasson and hired it to this company that company has since been bought out now and i think they're trying to keep those vehicles in stock but yeah just have a look have a look at something like a chasson welcome 530 that's got a hell of a lot of space a big lounge or that little horse trail or that little horse trail chasson that's uh, right um f62 wasn't it was that was it a tribute f62 i think it was wasn't it yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, so two Chasson Welcome or Chasson Five Thirty because I do do a flash version, and the F Sixty Two up by Alter Trail, both good 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 starting vans to have a look at. It, it depends how long you can spend in them as well. How many motorhomes do you buy a week when you're rocking and rolling? Half a dozen, something like that. We'll right. try and get one a day. Somewhere around. Where's, there. The, where's the food that you've been? furthest i've been is inverness and even though it's a bloody long drive back we fly up and we come yeah. back down uh, i think it's the a9 and that's probably one of the nicest drives i've ever had because they've also got the the air force bases around there and when you're going down these this lovely countryside road you got also got sometimes have the jet the fighter jets going down and it's just it was just brilliant it scares the hell out of you when you Think that the motor and wheels have fallen off at first, but it's actually a fighter jet above. What did you buy? I knew you was going to ask that. A motor home. <laughs> it was a new one, though, was it? It would have been a newer one to go to fly up that far. Would you, would you go to him with an S4 in 1998 or to sleep a symbol on a Fiat? No. <laughs> <laughs> How many do you sell, Jason? On a good um. Year? 100, 150. Okay. Yeah. Good numbers. Yeah. 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 Roughly two, two to three a week, basically. Uh, but we're only a small business. We're not. We're not geared up for the, the amount of numbers. Um, no. If you mark season and everything else, basically. So. Yeah. What's your, what's your favourite part of the job? 
Favourite parts of the job? Hmm. Oh, hang on. Where's the food that you didn't buy a motorhome from? The far coast of Wales. Right. And it was it was one that really sticks in my head because it was about it was about a four hour drive away because you have to go all the way through the middle of Wales or around the outside. You, you, there's not really the best roads going into there. And one of the questions we asked before we went out there is, does it have or did it have pets or smokers? And it was almost like a comedy sketch because we opened the habitation door and out came this tumbleweed of fur uh, and ash. Went into the bathroom. Sink was absolute was an ashtray effectively, and in the cab itself, at the front, the uh, the ashtray was overflowing, and we just walked away from it. It wasn't worth anything. It was that battered. And I think we went out there to pay about twenty thousand pounds for it, so it wasn't like it was a cheap motorhome. Ah, uh, what was the road trip? Eight hours. It's frustrating sometimes, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> The annoying part is you get them in runs as well. Correct, yeah. Yeah. We can go we can go we can probably go two months without getting one and then we'll get three in the space of two weeks. What's your favorite part of the job? Favourite part of the job. I do love doing this YouTube bit. Yeah. Yeah. I really do enjoy doing that. I enjoy doing the shows with uh, yours truly. Yeah. Um, it was a good show that January and February and Mars wanted. It was because we had a, we had a good it also laugh. T it, it also taught me about them as well. Hmm. Is I get to learn from them while I'm doing it. Uh, I also, as daft as it sounds, like minting up a van, which I'll probably say you're. You, I know you're the same. You, I mean, I, I, I do a good it. job of it, and you take it to the next level. Oh, I love a dirty van. Oh, <laughs> you could just lose yourself. Start on the roof. And they just work down, and they, oh yeah, they tea cut and wax all the front up as well. But uh, oh, because some, yeah, because a, because a motorhome can be damage free, but it's really dirty, oh. and it'll look a low value motorhome until you clean it, and then it seems to it, it can almost add three grand, five grand onto it just by the appearance. Yeah, yeah, definitely, especially when it's got the, the green around it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't beat a good, bit of green. Uh, can't beat a bit of green. What's your... Auctions are good. Auctions are good. Yeah. Not for buying or selling necessarily. It's... <laughs> Sorry, i just seen that comment from Lee just come up the bottom. <laughs> Thanks for letting us into that secret, Lee. <laughs> Taught you everything you knew, Lee. <laughs> um, but I like the auctions is because you get to see how the market's going. Both, both that, and you just you like I like to see people there. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. You know, we, we, apart from making calls and and going out and actually buying them, the auction you it's once a month, and there's probably twenty different people, thirty different people that you speak to that are all in the trade. Yeah, it's an information yeah. place. Yeah, very good information, but also you're like me who logs every single motor that goes through. So yeah. we know well, you can spot. At the end of the day, I look at the auction, it's the lowest. So it's the first. If you can spot the trends there, you know it's going to go filter up, up through. Yeah, I mean, bearing in mind, dealers probably buy 80, 90%, would you say? Would you say? There's not many public people buy them. The de oh. dealers buy most of them. So it's a very good in, um, indication of what, what's what's good and what's not. If I was looking to buy a motorhome, I wouldn't, unless you'd experience buy one from there, but it's a fantastic place to go. Rather than going to show where you've seen all new vehicles, it's a great place to go to see all different makes and models in all different ages. Yeah. I don't know whether it was my signal or went there, but I'm guessing you just said that you've got all different ages and makes and layouts and everything yeah. in one place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll remember that, Lee. <laughs> New Mercedes 2016 onwards. I've had many problems, including rip-off nonsense. It's costing £800 each. You're going to get problems with every make or model, aren't you? Let's face it. They sell yeah, many vehicles... 
you're going to get that chain, aren't you? Yeah, it's, it's either good or bad luck, unfortunately. But yeah, I mean, you, you, obviously your repairs on something like a Mercedes are going to be more expensive. That's your downside to them. What's your biggest gripe with motorhomes? A uh, couple of things. One is lack of space for sitting down on the toilet in them. <laughs> uh, it's it's more because if we I went away in a I went to uh, Ashbourne in the Peak District two years ago and we took a Swift. An old, it was like an 04 Swift Contiki. And <laughs> you actually went to sit down on the toilet and there's nowhere to put your legs. Mm. Seat belts. Did you get that? I've lost him. Seat belts. There's nowhere to put my legs. So, um, hold on, Jason. Oh, yeah, you're back. I might have lost you. Yeah, uh, the other thing is, like you just said, belts. Yeah, seat belts. Why have a four berth motor home and only put two seat belts in? Or even a six berth with two belts. Yeah. Um all auto trail and auto trail and swift, especially on the bigger models, Contiki's and Frontiers uh, are uh, very good at that. But a lot of them are not them so much, but a lot of dealer uh, motor home manufacturers are starting to get better at that. Eldis, for example, in two thousand and fourteen. They started promising that there will be as many belts as there are berths. So they started doing so. You could still have the the bench seats in them, but then you could do a pop up uh, three point uh, seats with three point belts. And I yeah. did notice that Benamar have started doing that as well, in a different fashion to what um, Elders are doing. Yeah, yeah. What would you say is your best pound for pound motor? Probably Chasson or Roller Team. I, I quite like something like a Roller Team or to Roller 707, I think, because you have got six, seven berths and it's good value for money. Yeah, yeah. The old Adris as well, 2005, 2007, you can buy them at good money as well. And that's, I mean that retail as well. And they're a, they're a well built van chain. Right. What about, what, about, what about Naus for that sort of age? Are they similar? They seem to do quite well with the price. I haven't had many in, so I don't really want to. Add, I don't know what to say with you on that one. No, we, we've we've had it. We've had a few, obviously, and they tend to. You get some nice colours on the body as well. They're not just plain white, which most of them were. You get some silvers and and blues in them, which makes them stand out a little bit more. Um, do you want to tell everybody about Friday? Yeah, just want to quickly say, um, Tony Collins. Thanks, guys. Brilliant evening and very informative thank you tony thank you for signing in um we didn't expect this to go quite as well as it has um with all the comments it's been very um very nice actually i've really enjoyed it yeah i have i mean that's that's nearly an hour and a half gone without even thinking about it yeah Okay, we're going to be doing some more live shows, the Motorhome Show. We want as many people on as we can <clears> get. <throat> Great comments, fantastic comments, but we want to speak to other people. If you're a YouTuber, if you're a Motorhome dealer, if you've just got a Motorhome, you want to ask a question, um, you want to have a chat, basically go to Twitter, follow my Twitter, Caravans in Campus at SY45RP. I'll follow you back. Send me a DM. Just say hi. We'll take care of all of that. If you want to go on Instagram, do exactly the same. And if you want to get in contact with Shane, if you haven't got Instagram or Twitter. Yeah, that's uh, simply Shane at we buy We we are going to post this video online, um, both on YouTube and other platforms. We're also going to make it as a uh, as a podcast as well. So if you can't tune in, but you want to listen to it on the road, and we'll, you know, we'll put details like that at the bottom of that as well. Enjoyed it very much. So yeah, I've, I'm looking to. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was a bit. I've, I've been very relaxed about it for the last few days until about ten <laughs> minutes before the show started. I tell you what, it's been stressful, hasn't it? Do, do you know what? Do you know what's made? Do you know what's actually made this show? The people. Um, yeah, the people. I, I think yeah. I'd have. I think I'd have struggled to get into it, but as soon as the questions started coming in, yeah, um, yeah, 
especially with uh, who was it that was having the party at the start? Oh yeah, it was Matt West. It was Matt um, Westby, wasn't it? Yeah. He started having a party on his own, and uh, that absolutely made it for me. And after that, he's uh, he down up there. Lee, you haven't got a clue what a douse that is. Douse, you thought that was a wardrobe. Sorry, but he's carrying on. <laughs> yeah, he thought it was a canouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's been great. Really, really, really enjoyed. Cheers, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, Phil, Phil, I'm speaking <laughs> to you on to Twitter. Uh, who else have we got left? We've got Matt. Oh, cheers for that. I'm going to have a beer now, are you? Yeah, I am as well. And um, cheers, Richard. Um, see you Friday. Yep, 7 p.m. See, <laughs> see you Friday. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, 7, 7 p.m. Friday, like we said at the start, and a couple of times all the way through the show, this was a practice run or a preemptive strike. Very, very good friend of both of us on Friday, Aaron, uh, camperbuy.com. He probably buys more campers than me and you, Shane. Yeah, I, th uh, I, think, uh, I think last time I spoke to him, he said he buys something like 500 a year. Um, a lot of knowledge. Um, really, really looking. For, I'm looking forward to that show. I am as well. It'd be interesting to see what his take on uh, the well, the market generally, and uh, what we think are going to happen with prices. As we said earlier on, I mean, we give a little bit of an answer to that, but it's interesting to see what other people say as well. And along with him yeah. coming on Friday, we've got we will have other shows. Oh, we're having a quiz. We got. Oh, we yeah, we got a quiz as well, haven't we? We're having a guess the motorhome. Yeah. Uh, we'll do Most the sport, news. which will take a second. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we're having a quiz. So yeah, we're some yeah quick. No, I'm not going to say anything. We're having a quiz. Yeah. We're having a guest of Otro, aren't we? We're going to fire some um, questions out to Shane. Um, and that's it, really, isn't it? And we'll probably chuck some over to Aaron as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'll You're just good. finish these off. Thanks very much. We'll see you all Friday. See you guys. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it.